this morning, and then we're going to praise the Lord after I get through ministering. The Lord really taught me a lesson this last week and revealed something very powerful to me that I should have already seen, but I had never seen before. And I want to share it with y'all. Um, how many of y'all have felt like that you have been going through an onslaught from Satan? Raise your hand. Yeah. And I know it's quite a few. Because, I mean, several of us have been going through the same thing at the same time. But then I also know that we have our own lives and things that we deal with. And I'm just going to be open and vulnerable with y'all this morning to share some things that were going on with me like Wednesday. And I want to show y'all how the enemy works. And what we should be doing as children of God to get our eyes on Jesus and off of what Satan is doing. But Wednesday... It just seemed like everything was coming at me at the same time. I'm going to pray before I get into this too much. Lord Jesus, I just thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you for this opportunity. Lord, right now, I just pray that you would speak through me, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would open the hearts and the minds of your people to receive what you have revealed, what you want us to do, Lord Jesus, that we would not stay in anything that the enemy is trying to dish out, Lord Jesus, but that we would embrace and come up to a higher level and receive everything that you have for us, Lord. Because we don't want what Satan has. We want what you have, Lord Jesus. And I know that greater is you that's inside of every one of us than anything that we might see ever coming against us, Lord. We give you praise for what you're doing inside of us, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you are uh, teaching us and raising us up to new levels, Lord, to where we are above everything that the enemy is doing, and he is under our feet. And right now, I bind up the works of the enemy in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is against you. I command you to take your hands off of the children of God. They do not belong to you. We belong to the Lord God Almighty. And I thank you, Lord, that you have greater plans than what we even see, Lord. Because you have called us to be the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. And Lord, just like you said, whenever you left this earth, Satan had nothing on you. Lord, let us be people that can say, and Satan had nothing on us. Mm, because we were standing in you, Lord, and you were standing in us, Lord. We love you, and we give you the praise and the glory and the honor, Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you love us enough not to leave us in a spot where we are under, Lord, but you love us enough to pick us up and say, this is not where you belong. Get back up here where you belong over this and not under it. Lord, we love you. We give you praise, Lord Jesus, for you are holy. You're worthy, Lord. You're above it all, Lord Jesus. Mm. Praise you, Jesus. Mm. Praise you, Lord. All right. So I'm going to share with y'all what was going on with me Wednesday. It was actually kind of going on in my house, I guess you could say. Buddy was kind of immune to it because he was at work. And when Buddy's at work, He's not really able to be around his phone and know what's going on in our lives. So even though I was trying to bring him into the middle of it by calling him, he wasn't able to answer his phone. So kind of I was on my own. <laughs> uh, anybody in here feel like you, sometimes you're dealing with onslaughts and you're just on your own? Mm -hmm. So what had happened, and I'm just being open with y'all, is Tony had made arrangements to go spend a couple of days with a friend of hers. I won't get on in that, and I thought that we had worked all the situation out on Tuesday so that she could leave the house on Wednesday and everything was taken care of and I didn't have to worry about nothing. Well, I started getting calls at work that uh, this person couldn't come get Tony, so she, Tony behind the scenes was working out a plan where she could go anyway. Anyway, it became a confusion bunch of mess and there was nothing I could do about it because I was at work. And then on top of that, I started getting sick at my stomach and I'm at work, I'm dealing with Tony, I'm dealing with the situation. 
and I'm just having to deal with it. Anybody ever feel like the things are coming against you and you just got to deal with it? But it gets to a point where it's just one thing after another just coming at you, and it gets to it where it's very heavy, and you don't think you can get past it. Well, on top of that, our dog got bit by a copperhead, and on top of that, Buddy's dad got sick to where his blood, his uh, heart rate got down to 40 beats a minute, and he had to be admitted to the hospital for a few days. And it's like one thing after another. It, I mean, it got to the point that whenever I got off at work at 5 o'clock, I went straight to the house and crawled into bed because that's how sick I was feeling. And I was steadily praying against this. I felt like witchcraft was coming against me. You know, I felt like some witch was praying against me or something. You know, where is all this coming from? And of course, I'm praying. I'm praying about all this. So that's the way I went to bed, and I intended to go to church Wednesday night, and I was just going to lay down for a little nap. You know, it's going to last about 30 minutes, maybe refresh, and get up and go. I slept for hours. So on top of that, I missed church on top of all that. I got up the next morning, Thursday morning. Well, actually, you no, know, I kind of dealt with that for a couple days. On Friday morning, I started to get up out of bed. I had my alarm clock set. I was not seeking God at all. I was still in a deep sleep, just getting out of bed, and I heard the Lord whisper to me. I heard Father God whisper to me. He said that the distractions are for one reason, and that is to take you out of my presence. He just whispered it to me, that the distractions are to take you out of of my presence. Now I want y'all to think for a minute. What distractions are coming against y'all? When you're looking at these distractions, are you able to get into the presence of the Lord like you need to? I wasn't. I had my eyes on the distraction. Praise you, Jesus. I want to talk to y'all for a minute. I want to talk to you about Elijah. I know y'all probably all know the story of Elijah. But let me, let me recap for you. Elijah was a mighty man of God. The people of Israel had taken their eyes off of God and had put them on Baal. And Elijah had been sent to try to get the children of Israel back to God. And so y'all know the story. He called on the uh, prophets of Baal to come build an altar, sacrifice a bull, bring all the people down. They're going to uh, see this showdown. And if Elijah's God was God, then he told the children of Israel, serve, serve God, our God. Or, you know, if Baal answered the prophets, then y'all choose who you're going to serve. Well, we know the story. We know that our God showed up in power. As soon as Elijah prayed, he had done poured these uh, water on top of this altar, the sacrifice. And we know as soon as Elijah said, God, God's come down. He licked up the uh, sacrifice, the water, the altar, everything. And he made a public show out of these false prophets because their God didn't even show up. Right. And then he took them down and killed 450 prophets of Baal. Okay. Now, I told you all that to tell you this. He was a mighty man of God, right? He had just done a mighty thing. But as soon as he did that, Jezebel started saying, I'm going to kill you. When she started saying that, he got his eyes off of God and got it on the Jezebel. Was he a different man, or was he the same man that just had killed the 450 prophets of Baal? He was the same man. What happened to this man? Was, he, was it still the same God that came down and licked up all the, uh, the offering, the sacrifice? It was the same God. What had changed? He got his eyes on the problem and took it off of God. He was that same mighty man. So I'm going to ask y'all this morning. I hope I don't step on no toes, but if I do, 
I'm sorry, because my toes were stepped on first. Okay, I'm not going to preach to you anything that God ain't done dealt with me about. Praise you, Jesus. I'm going to tell you, you are still the same mighty woman and man of God that you have always been. Has God ever did anything for you? Has God ever showed up in miracles and power for you? Can I tell you, you are the same person and he is the same God. And if you feel like there's an onslaught coming against you, it probably is. But you are greater because he that is inside of you is greater than that that is coming against you. The thing is, if we feel like we're going under, and on Wednesday, I did. I didn't just feel like I was going under. I was going under. The problem is that I got my eyes on everything else instead of God. Mm, praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Let's turn in our Bibles to 1 King chapter 19, verse 11 through 13. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11 through 13. I'm going to tell you that God's got a better place for you to dwell than to worry about what Satan's doing. Because <laughs> he is supposed to be under our feet. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11 through 13. And this is still Elijah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Okay, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11 through 13 says, this is God speaking. Then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. Now, I'm going to start right there and tell you that whenever Elijah got his eyes on the problem, he started going into depression. He started running. Instead of running to God, he was just running away from what he thought a problem was. Okay. But he had enough about him. He was so close to God that he knew one thing. He had to get to where God was to be able to come out of this mess. So he went to the mountain where the, he knew God would speak to him. And the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a still, small, quiet voice. Let me ask you something. Have you had any, it feels like, strong winds coming against you that wasn't of God? That maybe mountains were standing against you? Maybe it just felt like everything around you was falling apart? Maybe it's been hot with the fire around you, not godly fire, but demonic fire. Can I tell you that God wasn't in any of that stuff that's been coming against you? He's in that small, still, quiet voice. Amen. Let me tell you what was happening on Wednesday. The devil was yelling louder than God was speaking. That's what was happening to Elijah. Jezebel was hollering louder than Elijah was listening. Because sometimes you got to get so quiet that you can hear the voice of the Lord. You got to get to a place where there is nothing but calmness and peace. Well, how do you do that? Can I tell you that God's not going to leave you in a pit? Let me tell you what happened. I wasn't even listening for the voice of the Lord, and this is how much he loves me. He woke me up. Actually, he didn't wake me up. My alarm clock woke me up, and God was standing right there ready to... Get me out of this mess that I was in, looking at everything that was going on. He said, he whispered, these distractions are nothing but to keep you out of my presence. These distractions that were going on with Elijah was but nothing to keep him out of the presence of the Lord. Verse 13, so it was when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? That's the word of the Lord to me, to y'all. If you find yourself in a place where it feels like it's just mental torment, emotional torment, God is saying, what are you doing here? You don't belong here in this emotional state. You don't belong here in this mental state. Didn't you know that I was God all along? <laughs> Didn't you know that he was for you and not against you? Praise you, Jesus. 
Praise you, Lord. Let me tell you about a ploy, because that's what the Lord was telling me. He said, this is nothing but a ploy to take your eyes and make you move out of the position that I have called you to be in. This is what a ploy means. A trick designed to upset an opponent. Guess what? We are the opponent to the enemy. And anything he's doing is a trick to upset us. So the question is, are we upset? Can I tell you that we don't have to engage in every battle that is presented to us? Sometimes I think that we think we can control something, like we can direct something. Let me tell you what happened. I know what happened Wednesday. I started looking at what was going on with Tony and with being the mama, I want to control it, right? So I started getting in there trying to do something in my own strength. Now, Tony's 17, about to be 18 in a few days, and we're about to send her out of our house in 30-something days. I would say she's a grown woman. She's able to take care of some stuff on her own, and God had done told me, let her do some things on her own. Yes. Let her do. But I got in the, in, in the middle of this thing thinking I was going to be that same mama I've always been and take care of my baby, right? So I started hearing from the enemy some things that I didn't agree with. And God said, let her make her own decisions. She can't, she can't do some things unless she learns how to walk through some things. And she's going to have to walk through some things without me. But I started worrying. Uh -huh. I started being in fear. I started stressing about the situation. And you know what God told me? Let me ask you a question. How many of us can move anything by worry? But how many of us want to move some things? This is what the Lord told me. He said, worry and fear is not prayer. And I don't know about y'all, but I've been guilty a lot about this. Oh, I'm worried about this. I'm afraid this is going to happen. So I'm going to keep it before my face. I'm going to keep on dealing with it and dwelling on it and thinking that that is called prayer because every time I worry about it, think about it, fear about it, I'm saying, oh, Lord God, help this, bless this, do this. That's not prayer. God told me to tell you that that does not move his heart. What moves his heart is trust and faith and no doubt that he is God and that he is for you, he's not against you, and he will work out those things that concern you. The problem is, is when we let Satan move us out of our position, because we can't win the war in worry, in doubt, and in fear. We can only win the war when we are st stayed seated in Jesus. Now, I know I shared this vision with y'all I had uh, while Brother Henry was still alive and I preached up here uh, one time he had me come preach but I want to share this vision with you again in November the Lord gave me a vision of myself being as a little girl and I was seated I was seated between Jesus and Father God on the throne now, how many of y'all know that the Bible says that we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus? Yes. How many of y'all know the word that says that uh, Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father? Yes. So if we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus and he's seated at the right hand of the Father, then where are we supposed to be seated at? At the right hand of the Father in Jesus. And the Lord showed me this vision of me sitting right there. And he showed me this enemy that was starting to come toward me. And I started to do what I always do. Probably what you always do too. Just say I was sitting on the throne between Jesus and Father God. And that enemy started coming. And you know what I did? Same thing I always did. I'm going to take care of this thing. This is my responsibility. I'm going to stomp this devil. I know who I am in Christ. So what I do? I start to stand up. And Jesus said, no, he didn't actually say anything. He just went like this. Like, I got this. I got this enemy. 
He said, you stay seated. And he started to proceed toward that enemy. As soon as he did, that enemy ran. And then he turned around to me and he said, Gina, he's able to talk to me like this. I hope he's able to talk to you like this too. He said, the problem with you is that every battle is not yours to fight. The battle is mine. You stay seated because I told you to be seated in heavenly places with me. That I am the head. And if you're in me, then you are above and not beneath. You are the head and not the tail. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. So I think a lot of times we engage ourselves in battles that don't even belong to us. I want to read you a scripture. Um, this is out of the Message Bible. And so just listen to me. But Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6 through 7. Y'all know it well because it says, Not by might, not by power, but my spirit, by my spirit, says the Lord. I want to read it to you out of the Message Bible. It says, You can't force these things. How many of us are trying to force things to happen? They only come about through my spirit, says God of the angel armies. So Big Mountain, who do you think you are? Standing next to Zerubbabel, or you can put your name in that. Who do you think you are, Big Mountain? You're nothing but a molehill. He'll proceed to set the cornerstone in place. Talking about us. We're going to set the cornerstone in place if we get our eyes back on the cornerstone. What, who does the Bible say that the chief cornerstone is? Jesus. Jesus. We've got to put him in a place to where we're seeing him and not seeing everything else. Not seeing the mountain. And a lot of times I think that we are making mountains out of molehills because we are listening and we're seeing what Satan is trying to show to us instead of keeping our eyes on Jesus knowing he's got it all. He's always had it all. And the Lord told me that the battle has never been about what we see going on around us. The battle has always been to take us out of our position in God, all the way back to Adam and Eve. This is what the Lord showed me. He said that the enemy used the fruit as bait. That fruit was not the problem. The problem was when she took her eyes off of God and put it on what Satan was presenting to her. So my question this morning is what do we have our eyes on? Do we have our eyes on God or do we have our eyes on what Satan is presenting to us? Because he will present a whole lot of stuff to us. It could be our kids, it could be our jobs, it could be our health, it could be this church, it could be the deaths that have happened. It can be a host of anything that Satan would try to make bigger than God. And it actually took her out of the presence of the Lord. I'm going to tell you, if you get your eyes on Jesus, let me tell you, Eyes on Jesus equal peace and rest, even in the middle of the fight, because he handles it and not us. Eyes on Satan equals stress, anxiety, and pressure every time. Let's put our eyes back on Jesus and sit back and watch him tear the enemy up on our behalf. Why are we stressing? Why are we in anguish? He's got it. He's always had it. Has he always had you? Has he always had, has he always worked out everything behind you? Yeah. May not have been just like you wanted it, but it all worked out, didn't it? Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise you, Lord. You picked it on yeah. Well, he picked on me. Because it's easy for me to get my eyes on my child. Yes. I'm telling you, I love that girl. But I can't handle her life whenever she leaves my house. She's going to be a grown woman. But how many of us do the same thing with not just our children, but everything? Praise you, Jesus.
Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. And I, actually, I got mad this morning, not at God for telling me these things. I got mad because I realized all of a sudden that Satan had stole two days out of my life. That I could have been basking in the presence of the Lord and listening to him love me and me love him and listening to me tell him tell me what is my next instead of worrying about what my present is and what I see going on around me. Praise you, Jesus. I just wonder how much time, and it really makes me mad because if you sit here, I can think about Wednesday, but what if I thought about a lifetime of how much he has stolen from me because of all the things that I got my mind wrapped up in that it really didn't mean a hill of beans because in a little bit, God had it taken care of. And there was nothing I had to do about it but wait it out and love him and let him love me in the meantime. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Can I tell you that Satan will give us whatever we embrace? Right. I'm going to tell you about sickness. I've come to realize this over a few years, time of working deliverance and healings and things like that. I've watched people, like uh, doctors, speak things out of their mouth like diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And then that person is like, oh, I have this. And so they embrace it as that, right? It could be a host of, I'm just talking about one thing. It could be a host of anything. Maybe your spouse died. Maybe uh, you got a divorce. And now you got to make it on your own. Well, I can't do this. I ain't never been able to. You can start heaping yourself with problems. You can start causing your own self some problems just by your thoughts. Mm, praise you, Lord. <clears throat> praise you, Lord. Let me tell you this. This is what the Lord showed me. We're always talking about how Adam and Eve sinned and how they fell. And we talk about onslaughts from the devil and what the devil's doing and how hard life is. And I'm not, I'm not saying that life don't get hard. It does. It does. It just depends on how we go through it. Okay? <clears throat> Praise you, Jesus. <clears throat> But let me tell you about the onslaught of Satan and what we will embrace. Satan did not attack Eve and make her eat that fruit. No, he didn't. He presented it to her. She looked at it. She took her eyes off of God and she ate that thing on her own. She created her own problems. <laughs> so how many problems are we creating on our own? Man, I could have just went through Wednesday like, God, you got this. Because he did. He worked it all out. Let me tell you about how good my God is. I told y'all that a dog was, my dog was uh, bit by a copperhead. <laughs> I want to be like my dog when I grow up. <laughs> this dude is bad. Now, Tony was determined she was going somewhere, and this dog just been bit by a copperhead whenever she's leaving out the driveway, and she went anyway. And nobody was at home. She could have took him to the vet. But that's neither here nor there. That's another thing. I'm telling you, you get caught up in all kinds of mess. But let me tell you what my God did. When I got home from work that evening, you could tell where he had been punctured by a snake. And he was all swole up in here. And, and like I said, when I went in the house, I crawled into bed and went to sleep for hours. So I didn't, I didn't. The vent's closed. What am I going to do? Buddy gets home a little while later, and he gets out there and looking for a snake. <laughs> that dog had done ate half of that snake, and he had eaten the head half of that snake. Mm. The next morning I get up, this dog has a blood spot right there, and all this has gone down because it had all drained out. And my dog's sitting there all bowled up like this, like, I, I know I'm the man. I eat snakes for breakfast. <laughs> can I tell you something? That the Lord said that we can trump on snakes That's and right. serpents and That's that right. nothing will be able to harm us. That's right. So why are we looking at the snakes and worrying about the snakes when we can eat snakes for breakfast? That's right. Mm -hmm. Or better yet, we can stay seated in Jesus and let him Take care of the snake. Praise you, Lord. 
Now, I'm going to end this with this thought. And I really want you to think about that, about this. Do you know that Adam and Eve would still be in the garden today? Think about that. Yeah. They would still be in the garden today if they had not got their all eyes off of God and put it on something besides God. Can y'all imagine what it would be like if they had stayed in the garden all these years? Say we were born. We're descendants of Adam and Eve. Say we were born right now. Guess what we would be living in? Ooh. <laughs> it's just a thought. But if they've never sinned, if they've never put their eyes on what Satan was presenting to them, let me tell you something. I'm not going to tell you it's not going to be easy because Satan's always going to present something to you. It's what we choose to do with it. So I'm telling you, stay in that place of where you're in the garden every day, where you can get up and you can hear the voice of the Lord, where you can see his face, where you can seek his heart. What's the Bible said? It said, my sheep know my voice and another they will not follow because they do not listen to the voice of strangers. Amen. Satan is a stranger to us. We've got to get to a place where we see him. What's the Bible say? Seek my face. And what did David say? My God says, seek my face. And his face I set out to seek. Amen. My Bible also says that David was a man after God's own heart. What does that mean? He was pursuing the heart of God. He had all this stuff going on around him, but his heart was toward God. Yes. Praise you, Jesus. That's the people we've got to be in. No more, regardless of what's going on around us, we are after God. And we're only going to do, and we're only going to embrace, and we're only going to accept what he is saying and what he's doing. So get back to your position. Get back to your position. Now, I want us to, uh, buddy, if you will, come on and turn on this YouTube. We're going to praise the Lord. How many of y'all, okay, I'm going to give you time because the Lord is giving, he's, oh, he's so gracious. He's always giving us time.